Hi, welcome to the small shed. This Saturday we're making a wooden spanner. See you in a minute. Now it may sound a bit of an odd thing to do and a bit of an odd material to use for a spanner. This is for Hetty's front wheels which are slightly different to anything normal. Um, so let's pop in the garage and have a look and see what the problems are. Right, so this is how Hetty's wheels work differently to most other cars. Don't have wheel nuts. You essentially have that. And those unscrew and then you can lift the wheel off. That goes onto a tapered spline on there. And although you can use a copper hammer or a rubber hammer or a hide mallet, it's just giving the uh, chrome plated spinners a bit of a bash all the while. That's something I want to try and avoid. So I want to do something that'll stop me having to put all the smashing into one side all the while. Something that'll spread the load. And you can buy a plywood thing that fits over that you can hit and I'm going to make one of those it's probably as cheap to buy one but it's the usual it's something to make so uh, let's get on and have a go so knowing roughly what the diameter of the wheel centre was I put a 90 millimeter diameter circle in the middle of the piece of plywood I'd got and I'd cut out a rough template of the shape that I wanted so I trimmed out the actual size to make myself a mask with the center lines in both directions marked on it so I could transfer the actual ear shapes on it onto the plywood because it's a slightly odd asymmetric shape to them just pop those on with pencil and then I could drill it out with a force and a bit in one end and then cut out with a uh, jigsaw I then cleaned it up with the belt sander and popped it out to try it first. Right, I think we're there with the fit now. That just fits nicely over there. Obviously it needs another thickness to get to actually catch the main part of the spinners. But now I've got that one I can make the other one do. And you'll notice they don't work in reverse. There's a left and a right side to these so that will have to be used that way around on that side and the other way around on the opposite side because the, the threads on the wheels are different. What This is an anti-clockwise, the other one's clockwise. Right, that's got me the shape pretty much sorted. That fits snugly over. I do need it to be twice the thickness though. So what I'm going to do now is just mark that out on the piece underneath and I'll hog most of that out again the similar way but then I'm going to get the flush trim router from the um, that I was using on the bus and just work my way around the edge using that as effectively as a template to work it through and then we'll well in fact before that I think I'll glue and screw them together so that I've got effectively a 30 six millimeter piece of plywood then and then I can work out the shape of the actual main part where I smack it with a hammer that will come out roughly around there and, and give me a straight piece out there but we'll mark that up uh, once we've got all that done something like that 
and then we can just cut that away with a bandsaw afterwards and tidy it up. Splintering a bit plywood, uh, I've got a clean wood bit in the jigsaw but it's still hammered away at it. Right, I'm just going to put some glue on this now to glue the two halves together and then we'll drill out and hog out afterwards. I think that's probably best. That way I'll get a, an exact copy. So the two parts then glued together, clamped up and left for well I think I left them about 12 hours actually overnight came back to them the next day and stripped it down and basically rinse and repeat what you did on the front one roughly just hog it out with jigsaw uh, and go back in then with the flush trim route a bit and get it all tidied up Put a trim out around it just to get the two parts identical and that made me the full 36 millimeter thick spanner part. And then quick clean up with a bit of sandpaper, abronet or whatever and then it was on to marking out for the outer part of it, the outer shape I just used a rule and some tins to get the rounded edges that I needed to get the full shape so that the whole thing became um, more spanner like and something that was actually useful to be able to hit with a hammer in the right place and um, get some action from it quick trim with the bandsaw round from that shape and uh, put it back onto the Triton belt and spindle sander get it all nicely shaped right that's got the basic shape done I'm just going to put a round over on it just to make it a bit more uh, handleable a bit sharp on the edges just put a normal straightforward round over on it for the finish I've just used some of the clear water-based uh, quick drying varnish that I've used on a couple of other projects recently that just gives it a bit of protection from oil grease and that sort of thing so there we are what it means is that I don't have to run around with a rubber mallet in the toolkit on the car I can just leave that in there that fits on that way round and the other side will fit round the other way see it only goes on one way for each side then it just means any any sort of hammer I've got or a brick at the side of the road you can get your wheel nut off simply enough and similarly do it back up again without causing any distress
the wheel and the other thing is this spreads the load onto both sides when you hit it so finished job Right, well that's another step on the way to getting uh, Hetty on the road. It's a small step, but it's something that I needed to, to get sorted. Uh, and at the moment I really can't get a lot of work done until the garage is sorted. So it's a sort of a minor diversion more than anything. Let's uh, hope we can soon get that garage plastering done and I can get out there and start and work on that. Hope it was of interest. Look forward to seeing you next week and we'll try and be doing something different then. I'll see you then. Bye.